and welcome to POS 420, Introduction to Unix. I'm your facilitator, Scott Stewart, and I wanted to take a few moments at the beginning of the course to look at some fundamental concepts that generally a lot of students have questions about early on and that I think will help you in your understanding of the operating systems as we go through the next five weeks. Now, most of these topics when I talk about Unix or Linux are going to be fairly interchangeable. Um, I generally, and this is just as a very rough guide, normally think of Unix as being the commercial, that is the for purchase option of the two operating systems, whereas Linux I normally think of as more of the freely available, downloaded from the internet, paper support if you wish, uh, type arrangement. Now that's not to say that there aren't free distributions of Unix, there are, and there are portions of Linux that people can charge for. So. It, it varies, but by and large, think of Unix as commercial, think of Linux as, as free, and think that both of the operating systems are fairly much the same in the way that they lay out uh, their file systems, uh, commands, things of that nature. What I wanted to take a look at first was the idea of how files and directories and things like that are laid out in Unix. One of the things that I think strikes folks early on is, is when they realize that the way files are laid out, what they call the hierarchical file structure, is very similar to the way that Windows and earlier on MS-DOS uh, arranged files. Basically, you can think of the concept as an upside down tree. At the very top, you have the root or the root file system. This is uh, basically the top level directory. Everything branches off from root at this point. Root in Unix is designated by a forward slash. Now, not to confuse the issue too much, but you're going to hear us talk about root in a couple of contexts in this course. There's first the root file system, which, like I said, is kind of the parent, the top level of everything that goes down below that. And then you're going to hear us talk about the root user. The root user is the super user, the master account, if you will, of the system. Uh, it's something that is uh, ruthlessly guarded by most administrators because if you have the root account or access to the root account then you can virtually do anything on the system including damaging valuable files. But root, the root user and the root file system really only share a name. There's not really any necessary uh, connection to those. At least nothing that you're going to have to be worried about in this course. But think of the root as being the top file system. You can also think of this as sort of like an org chart in, in a company. At the very top, you have the, the CEO or the president or what have you, and then below that, you have the vice presidents and so on and so forth. Below root, we have, and these directories are going to differ from system to system in some cases. There are going to be some that we'll see in a moment that are consistent throughout most Unix and Linux environments. But you may have directories such as opt for optional programs. You may have a directory called home or users' home directories. That's where the users would put their own files, uh, programs, and things like that. And then you would have something like user. Now notice that I prefix each one of these directories by a slash. Well, that first slash indicates that opt is coming off of root. So for instance, um, if we go down further, we would see that, let's say, opt has some directories called SSH, accounting, and security. Now, if I wanted to go and actually take a look at the contents of these directories or actually refer to these directories, what I would do, this account, this file right here called ACCT, let's say I use a, put accounting programs in there, I would refer to that as slash opt, because remember the slash indicates that we're coming off of root first, this is the first level, slash opt, slash ACCT. Or writing has much, at least much to be desired, but basically you can see each level as we traverse further down, we use this forward slash to denote the next level down. If accounting had a subdirectory off of that, I might use a slash and let's say I call this data. And I can go further and further and further as I want. But basically, think of root as the top level. All of the subdirectories that fall underneath that spread out into branches. Further, we have leaves or subdirectories, and this is very much the same way that Windows and DOS arrange their files. If you ever open up a, a file manager window in Windows, 
and expand the little plus marks to where you can see further down into each directory. You will see how it sort of spreads out like branches and leaves on a tree. That's the same thing that we see here. Now, one point of confusion uh, that I think uh, we need to address, most of the time when you're working in Windows, you're working with a, a GUI, a graphical user environment. That goes without saying. Although Windows, even in its current version, does have provide access to a text-based command prompt. And uh, I think when students switch from GUIs that they're more comfortable with using or more familiar with, go into a text-based environment, like we'll be seeing mostly in the course here, um, they get a little bit confused as far as to where they are in the directory structure at any given time. Uh, the easiest way to do that, there are some commands that we use to kind of jump back and forth into these directories, and we'll see those in a moment. But first, what I wanted to do was talk a little bit about what you're going to find in some of these directories. Now, like I said before, what you see off of the root directory on any given system is going to be different. There are going to be a handful of directories that are going to be the same across just about any Unix or uh, Linux platform that you find. There's going to be others that are going to be unique to each installation. For instance, if I'm running a program called SAP, which is a very widely used business accounting manufacturing control pro uh, application, you might see a directory called slash SAP. And then there will be subdirectories and sub sub subdirectories underneath all of those. If I'm not running SAP, I won't see that. So what I want to focus on is ones that you are going to see uh, just about anywhere that you sign on and regardless of...